Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today I am building something from the Alien series. Now, Easter just happened while this is being um, released, I guess you could say. And I know that in the craft stores there are tons of those oversized Easter eggs. I usually buy a couple of them every year because they're great for making props with. Uh, I've made helmets with them and bodies for creatures and things like that in the past. I thought I would dust one off and use another one today and instead of me just putting a bunch of new materials on there I thought I'd dive into my scrap bin over there get some scrap pieces of EVA and kind of piece this together and to kind of tie everything together I'm going to use some FOMO from Cosplay Apprentice uh, which is a clay foam that you can use um, it definitely allows you to add texture and make it more organic and all that other fancy stuff that is just a matter of sculpting instead of sanding and breathing in a bunch of stuff. So today we are going to build a xenomorph egg from the movie Aliens. Or Alien. Let's get to build. I got this oversized egg in a set of three from Hobby Lobby. I also have seen them at the dollar store and on Amazon. I believe this is the smallest of the three. Usually they go on sale after Easter, so you can pick them up for pretty cheap. Starting out, I rough up the surface with some sandpaper. It gives the surface something to grip to when I glue stuff to it here in a minute. <laughs> From time to time, you probably see me on a program with 3D models. It's called Sketchfab. Uh, I found this model that I liked on there for this build and used that as a jumping off point. I hot glue the egg together, grab some scrap from my scrap bin, and map out a plan for the top opening using a Sharpie. I get lots of comments about how I must waste lots of foam, but in actuality, I keep most of the cutoffs in my scrap bin and pull them out from time to time time to do little parts and things like that. It kind of flares up at the opening, so I cut these wedges to put on the top. You can heat form the foam a little bit to help it fit the egg a little better when gluing it up. Typically when I'm gluing foam to plastic, I use super glue. Similar to the top, I added a base so the egg could sit up on its own. Now I'm basically going to cover the whole egg with scrap foam. I hold it up where I want it to be placed, then make some marks, cut it out, and shape it with my rotary tool. I'm adding the foam on the outside to build up the features of the egg, and then give it some material for me to carve wrinkles and textures in later.
So I divided the egg up into four sections and then I'm adding shapes and bulges in certain areas to shape it more like what I see in the picture. I used the same technique as before, holding the foam up, sketching out the shape and then cutting it out. After it's glued in, I can also go back and make small adjustments if I need to. I used some cheap half dowels I got at the craft store for what looks like lips along the top. I just super glued them into place following the edge of the wedge at the top and my markings I made at the beginning. Is it just me or does it look a lot like the plant monster from Little Shop of Horrors? Now I'm going to add some wrinkles into the foam and make some transitions into the different structures of the egg. I'm using my rotary tool with a stone bit to carve out these lines. There are obvious seam lines everywhere and I want the EVA dowels to transition better to the rest of the foam so my solution for this problem was to use some FOMO from Cosplay Apprentice and bridge those gaps. I dunk it in water to make it more pliable and also wet the surface of my egg so that it'll stick to the foam. You can pull off some pretty great details and filler with this clay foam. I made sure not to go too thick because it does take a while to dry the thicker it is obviously the longer it'll take to set up. Once I finish I let it sit for 24 hours. To speed up the drying time a little bit and add some bubble texture, I purposefully overheated the surface of the foam. Normally you wouldn't want to do this because it messes up the smooth surface, but in this situation, I want the lumps. Just try not to catch it on fire, which I've, I've done in the past. And make sure you wear a respirator and work in a well ventilated area. <laughs> Two coats of Plasti Dip. 
To do all the painting on this build, I'm going to use some Platifex acrylic paint. The way I attack the paint job to begin is by putting some bright, blotchy mixes of a couple of colors, purposefully not mixing them completely. Like the lips will get pink, red, and an off-white, and then the rest of the egg will get a green, brown, and off-white. It's going to look a lot brighter than it should, and it'll look bad before it looks good. Now I'm going to dilute the Platifex acrylic paint with some Windex, a one to one ratio, and run it through my airbrush. This is one of those all in one units with the compressor attached to the actual gun itself. This is where it starts to darken the egg and looks a little bit better. So you could achieve a similar look by just doing some washes with a brush also if you don't have an airbrush. <laughs> After one pass with my airbrush, I go in and hand paint on some veins in red. I also hit the lips with a little to add some details. Then once that dries, I make a couple of more passes with that brown mix in my airbrush and then a light pass with some black also. I think in total I put down maybe nine layers of paint from the primer layer all the way to the airbrush pass. So it does take a while to build up that effect. And we are finished. Here is the end result. I really like how the paint job turned out on this. I realize it's probably not screen accurate, which none of the things I ever make are screen accurate. I just kind of have fun with it. Um, it is obviously a lot smaller than it should be, so maybe this is like the pre premature egg before it fully develops. Um, I tested out the airbrush that I got a while back, the all-in-one compressor. Um, it, it works relatively well. It does sputter a little bit, which I mean, that's typical with a lot of airbrushes. Um, and it's probably more of me not mixing paint properly than it is anything else. But um, I thought I got some pretty cool effects using it. Um, maybe you'll try and make something using those ginormous Easter eggs that you get on discount after the holiday season is over and make something that's totally different or make it a much weirder egg. I wouldn't recommend it. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these. Tell them much props. I was kind of thinking that maybe we just, you know, crack it a little bit. You know, get you a little xenomorph omelet going.
thanks to all my Patreon members who continue to support this channel and give me the ability to make more awesome stuff. If you enjoy what I do, please consider joining my Patreon. Links for it are in the description below. 